Hello guys, uh, welcome to this little uh, mini presentation on the subject of substantive tests. Um, my name's Martin Jones and I'm a lecturer for the London School of Business and Finance uh, here in London and um, also I have produced the online product, the interactive product. Um, this is a presentation as you can see on F8 and I've selected in particular substantive tests for, um, for my little five minute, three minute presentation. It's a tricky subject, it's a tricky subject and there's lots to learn about substantive tests and I can't, certainly can't teach you the entirety of substantive testing in five minutes. But what I can do is I can teach you the linguistic design of writing a substantive test in the exam. Um, students often get good at auditing but poor at communicating their knowledge in the exam. They do honestly, they get, they get quite good at auditing but they don't know how to write the sentences and therefore they tend to score half marks where they should be scoring full marks. I mean you can imagine how catastrophic that is. If you write down you know, ten good ideas but you don't communicate them clearly, you're only going to score five because you're only going to score ten half marks. That's really bad, isn't it? So what I want to do is not some... I, to be honest, I'm not really so much looking at substantive tests as such. I want to look at the construction of the, of the language when doing a substantive test. What I'm going to say out loud is going to sound so simple, but it is really, really important. I'm going to show you how to write a substantive test. There's actually two different ways of writing a substantive test. And they use um, two very short words. Those two very short words are to and by. That's by and to. And as long as you understand those two words and how to use them, cool, you're going to score one mark for every substantive test rather than scoring just half. Let me show you what I mean by that with a little illustration. Perhaps I should say it out loud first. So I'm going to wind up a little bit of blank screen so I can bash through that in a second. But I'm going to say it out loud. Nice simple test. Um, I will confirm the existence of the new building by inspection. Now I'm going to write that down because I've done something there that's quite subtle. But I want you to see it. Oh, I want to put the word example. Example, substantive test. Example, substantive test. But like I say, I'm not really teaching you substantive testing as such. I'm teaching how to write it down in the exam. I will confirm the existence of a new property by inspection. That's it, that's the substantive test. And that's worth one mark in the examination. But I want to show you why it's worth one mark. It's worth one mark because it is in fact two things. It is both what you were doing and why you were doing it. Now I'm going to give you a bit of colour first. I will, oops, I went a bit far there. Can I just get rid of that? I will and then buy. I will confirm the existence of a new property by inspection. So, well, let me give you a bit more. I don't know if you start, maybe you've started to see it already, what I'm doing. But the blue bit down here, that is what you are doing. And the green bit up there, that is why you are doing it. Now this is what you need. The examiners 
spend so much time trying to get students to do this, and some do and some don't. And it's just catastrophic for the students who just do one or the other. Because a substantive test is what you're doing and why you're doing it. And if you miss one of them, you're not going to get the full mark. So examiners say things like, uh, give me substantive tests and explain the purpose of each of those substantive tests. It's only one mark for each substantive test, but the examiner is trying to get you to communicate why you're doing it as well as what you're doing. So just to get it wrong, I will inspect the new building. Yeah, but why? I will confirm the existence of the new property. Yeah, but how? <laughs> I'm getting overexcited here, aren't I? But it is, it is such a big problem that students have that what you have to do to do a substantive test is communicate both what you were doing and why you were doing it. My personal favourite is by. I like that because I say why I'm doing it and then what I'm doing and it seems to work for me. But other people prefer to. Do you want to try two with me? I will inspect the new building to confirm its existence. Can you see it's exactly the same, but rearranging the words? I'll say it again. I will inspect the new property to confirm its existence. That's also worth a full one mark. Okay, I will confirm the existence of a new property by inspection, one mark. Alternative, I will inspect the new property to confirm its existence. Either of those worth a full mark. But it's so important when the examiner asks you for substantive tests that you give both why and what. Both what and why. Good luck with that.